Is there an actual universe, or is it all put together with our mind? Now, I can understand if you say there is an actual universe, mm -hmm. and we distort it, we change it according to our interpretations and stuff. Yes. Uh, and I meet people that say the whole, everything is created by our imagination. I can't accept that. Okay. Th isn't there an actual universe? Now, we can misinterpret it, mm -hmm. but there is actually something? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I feel much better. <laughs> okay, so our problem comes by misinterpretation and... Well, and, uh, I would say yes and no. Hmm. I'm in trouble again. <laughs> no, you're not. You're in truth again. Okay. At the level of concepts, every question can be answered yes and no. Hmm. And sometimes, and perhaps... And possibly, it takes tremendous amount of uh, absence of private self to see the profundity of that. If everything is yes, no, yes, it might work for you. You might sound very clear, yes, I know this, but you are just following a groove. If I take you out of your groove, you are completely lost. Hello, my name is George. Yes, but can you find my groove first? And then you find a groove. Oh, hello, George. You will only know things in your groove. This is what we're doing in your little world. Then everything has to funnel into your world, and you'll see. Okay, so okay, so that's what it is. You're looking for dependables in your groove, but your groove is just one possibility, like the track of a plane through the sky. There's no path there. You see. So. When you are groove-free, meaning that you have washed your mind, comb out all these ideas you have about yourself, then you can be in any groove. You can find smooth and effortless affinity with every point of view, because they are your own. You can be in any point of consciousness and view from that perspective of consciousness. Because you're in open terrain, you don't have to be wearing some spacesuit. You are completely free. You're in spontaneous knowledge. You don't have to save up knowledge, because you're in something greater than knowledge. You're in knowingness. And knowingness is alive. Knowledge is dead, I will tell you. When you think you know something, you're dead. You're dead. You file it away. You pick it up when you think you need it. It so becomes in a vault, you put it in a vault. Stay in knowingness. And knowingness is alive. Now you know something. You know, and then you don't need it doesn't need it. You don't store it. Then you are one with the universal mind. You're not merely a person. You're the impersonal. The impersonal manifests and play through the costume of the personal, but it's only an apparent. The person is a concept based upon the body. The person will live as long as the body lives. But beingness does not live as long as the body lives. The body is existing in the being, not the being in the body. It's in the body and the body is in it. And this you are knowing, you are coming to know. I don't want to teach you this. Somehow I find myself talking like this at the moment, I don't know why. But I don't want to emphasize this as a kind of teaching, because I prefer that you discover. Because when you discover, it becomes intimate knowledge for you. It becomes your own experience, direct. Nobody can take it away from you. You see, you become one with it. You are one with it. Even to say you become one with it is not true. What becomes one with it is your attention becomes one with you. So. At a certain point, you lose interest in all things for the moment, until you find who you are. Then you will look again with the eyes of God. It will be very different, very different. When you see other human beings, so-called, you know you are seeing God, you are seeing divinity, because that is what is there, beyond even the concept of divinity. The sense of other will not be so strong for you. It will just be another stage name for the Divine. 